Today we have Teen Titans, a show that has captured our hearts with its action-packed adventures and relatable characters. But let's hit pause for a moment and ask some burning questions. How did our beloved heroes come into existence? What led Robin to evolve from our teenage hero to the enigmatic Nightwing? And just where did Raven acquire her wicked powers? Get ready to unravel the secrets behind our heroes and their foes, and join us as we cover the entire series from beginning beginning to end in detail. In the distant past, long before the Titans came together as a team, we learn about Nark, a Neanderthal who becomes frozen under the Arctic during prehistory. He's accompanied by a girl named Cole who has the power to crystallize her body, but we'll get to them later. Now, a major time skip to 3000 BC, where the humans have divided themselves into tribes. Cyborg from the future finds himself trapped in this era and becomes a hero in a barbarian tribe led by the fierce warrior Sarasim. He battles gruesome creatures alongside the tribe and grows attached to them. However, he discovers that Kral, one of the warriors, is behind the attacks and has plotted his displacement. Cyborg faces Kral and his monstrous transformation, but is overpowered. Fortunately, the tribe saves him and he decides to help them in their fight. Cyborg's power runs low, but he continues to fight valiantly. In the end, he professes his love to Sarasim and fights alongside her until Raven pulls him back to the the present. Cyborg is left heartbroken, but finds solace in a book that reveals the tribe's victory and their appreciation for him as a hero. So, in a way, he was a hero even before he was born, and that is pretty darn cool if you ask me. Around the same time, we witness the rise of General Immortus, an immortal man who amasses an army and embarks on a century-spanning war spree across different eras and civilizations. From ancient Egypt to the Roman Empire, the three kingdoms in China, and even Japan's Sengoku period, General Immortus leaves a trail of chaos and destruction in his wake. Throughout these historical periods, he becomes a legendary and feared figure, etching his name in the annals of time. In medieval times, around 1000 AD, there was this epic showdown between a dragon called Malkior and a wizard named Rorik of Null. Rorik tried his magic moves, but the dragon's strength was just too much to handle. So, in a last-ditch effort, Rorik used a tricky spell to trap Malkior inside of a special book. Centuries later, that book conveniently lands into the hands of Raven. Oh, speaking of Raven, back in the day, there was an interdimensional demon named Trigon who sought to take over the universe. He tricked a woman named Orella into marrying him, and they had a daughter named Raven. Realizing Trigon's evil ways, Orella took Raven and moved to Azeroth to protect her. Trigon's hunger for power led him to attack Azeroth, but he was sealed away by the Azar Order. They even made a ring of Azar to protect against Trigon's influence. However, even when sealed away, Trigon was still considered extremely dangerous, and stupid Earthlings even had a cult that revolved around prophecies of his return. His daughter Raven was the key, and was prophesied to be the ultimate end of the world as we know it. But the people of Azeroth accepted her anyways, and trained her in hopes that she could falsify the prophecies. And oh boy did she deliver, but... You know, more on that later. Now, Raven spends her days on Earth doing whatever good she can do before the time of her biggest challenge comes. Taking another leap in time, there was an artist in Japan who fell in love with a woman he painted. In a desperate attempt to bring his creation to life, he dabbled in dark magic, but the spell backfired terribly. It cursed him, transforming him into a being made of paper with ink flowing through his veins. Now known as Brashogun, he gained the ability to create colorful minions using his magical ink. Becoming Tokyo's first supervillain, Brushogun spread fear and chaos throughout Japan. However, his reign of terror came to an end when he was captured by the power-hungry Uehara Daizo, who had sinister plans for his magic. During the height of the Cold War, a soldier's life took an extraordinary turn when he became a part of Professor Chang's ambitious experiment for the Russian security force. The goal was to create the ultimate super soldier, and it seemed like a success. His 
stamina and strength skyrocketed, making him a force to be reckoned with. Is it just me, or did they just straight up make a DC version of the Winter Soldier? Well, whatever. Anyways, an unforeseen side effect emerged, and that was that he couldn't control the energy coursing through him, and it kept increasing with activity. The consequences were disastrous when a combat demonstration caused a catastrophic explosion, wiping out an entire city like a nuclear blast. Fearing his own power, he confined himself to the facility to protect others from harm. Alright, so if you haven't clicked off the video yet, I promise we're finally getting to the exciting part of the show, the origin of the Teen Titans. Some years in the future, Robin, whose real name is Richard Dick Grayson, was born into a family of circus acrobats known as the Flying Graysons. Tragedy struck when his parents were caught in the crossfire of a gang war related to a guy named Tony Zuko. Batman, who witnessed the incident and had also lost both his parents to criminals, adopted Dick and trained him to become his crime-fighting partner Robin. However, as Dick grew older, he became more independent and wanted to prove himself as a hero in his own right. He eventually left Batman's side to continue fighting crime on his own in Jump City and, well, the rest is history. A few years later, a young boy named Garfield Logan, also known as Beast Boy, came into the world with a unique upbringing. His parents, Mark and Marie Logan, were geneticists studying wildlife in jungles around the globe. A fateful encounter with a green monkey led to Garfield contracting Sakusha, but thanks to his parents' ingenuity, they saved him using a special serum that gave him the incredible ability to shapeshift, turning his skin, hair, and eyes green. Sadly, his parents passed away in a boating accident, leaving Garfield orphaned. So, he set his sights on joining the superhero team Doom Patrol. With his resourcefulness and shapeshifting powers, Garfield impressed the team when he broke into their headquarters. They saw the potential in him and welcomed him as a valuable member, giving him a new family to fight evil alongside. During a critical mission, the Doom Patrol faced a dangerous threat from the Brotherhood, who aimed to activate a quantum generator capable of creating black holes and causing mass destruction. As the team was caught off guard and immobilized, Beast Boy had to decide between stopping the generator or saving his teammates. Ultimately, he prioritized his team's safety, but he received a skull from Mento, the team's leader, for going against orders. Witnessing Mento's harsh methods and controlling nature, Beast Boy grew unsettled and decided to venture out on his own, just like Robin, embracing a solo path to find his place in the world. Moving on, Cyborg, formerly known as Victor Stone, was a talented and strong teenager with a promising future. However, when an accident took his mother's life and left him severely injured, Victor's father used cybernetic enhancements to replace his damaged body parts. Now, although these cybernetics kept Victor alive, he faced rejection and isolation from his friends and peers, which led to deep frustration and resentment towards his own father. One night, feeling frustrated and wanting to escape from his father's constant presence, Cyborg decided to hit the streets. He wore a hoodie to conceal his cybernetic parts, hoping to blend in and feel normal for once. However, fate had other plans for him that night when he came across an alien girl named Starfire. Now, Starfire was born and raised on the planet of Tamaran, where her people derived their power from emotions. However, when their planet was attacked by the Gordanians, her own sister Blackfire betrayed her to the enemy as a peace offering. This heart-wrenching event took a toll on their parents, and they eventually passed away from grief. On the other hand, Starfire was transported to the Citadel in a ship, but she broke free and found herself landing in Jump City, where she unintentionally caused chaos while trying to free herself from handcuffs. It was during this incident that she encountered four young teenagers, and those four teenagers just so happened to be Cyborg, Raven, Beast Boy, and Robin, all of whom jumped in on their own to save the city from this new threat. They soon realized she just just wants to be free, and after Robin opened her cuffs, she gave him a kiss. Not out of love, but rather to learn the language they speak. It's a weird Tamaranian thing, I guess. Soon after, she flew off, demanding to be left alone. Little did they know, this event right here was going to make them the most formidable team in the history of DCU. Now, the other four worked together to locate her when the Gordanians invaded Earth, and even helped temporarily fend off their forces. However, that invited an even 
even larger invasion, and the fate of the planet definitely hung in the balance. United as a team, the Titans took a stand to save Jump City. Even in their first encounter, we can see Starfire blushing at Robin, hinting that there's something going on between the two. Anyways, Robin takes the lead, Raven uses her telekinetic shield, and Cyborg takes down Lord Trogar with his sonic cannon. With the city safe, the team celebrates their victory and gets to know each other just a little better. Starfire expresses her wish to stay on Earth because of the kindness that they showed her, and all five of them decide to stay together. And this has been the entire backstory, prequel, origin, and whatnot of Teen Titans. But stay tuned, because we are just now only getting to the first season of the show. Man, these shows were so well made. So the very first episode begins with a showcase of Hive Academy's top graduates, Gizmo, Jinx, and Mammoth. They're being tasked with a mission to destroy the Teen Titans by the mysterious mercenary Mr. Slade. They launch a surprise attack on the Titans, and the tower is taken over by the Hive. While they renovate the tower, Cyborg's arm acts as a spy drone to help the Titans take back the tower and defeat the criminals. Meanwhile, Slade reveals that their true mission was only to send a message to the Teen Titans visit to check up on her sister, but ends up stealing most of the attention, which makes Starfire feel irrelevant. To make matters worse, she visited Earth so her sister would be captured in her place for the crimes she's been committing. In the end, she gets captured and Robin assures Starfire that she is valued and irreplaceable to the team. Oh, do I sense some potential love story coming up? Sometime later, the Titans face a prison break-in by the villain Cinderblock. They try to stop him, but but the team gets beaten and Cyborg, blaming Robin for the mishap, quits the team. Meanwhile, Slade teams up with Cinderblock to unleash a powerful monster named Plasmus. The Titans face Plasmus, but they struggle to defeat him until Cyborg returns just in time to help Robin. They of course reconcile and then work together to defeat Plasmus, but Slade is setting some other plans into motion. One night, the Titans face Thunder and Lightning, who are causing destruction for their own amusement. A mysterious stranger manipulates Thunder and Lightning into creating a fire monster, but they eventually realize the consequences of their actions. With the Titan's help, Thunder and Lightning manage to defeat the fire creature. After a battle, Robin discovers that the stranger was actually Slade in disguise, who manages to get away once again. The gang then encounters a new villain, Red X, who turns out to be Robin in disguise. He steals computer chips for Slade to get close to him, but the Titans are unaware of his secret identity. Robin's obsession with catching Slade leads to a rift with his teammates, who feel betrayed when they discover his double life. Despite his efforts, Robin still hasn't learned much about Slade, and the team worries that he's losing trust in them. The Titans learn about his plan to build a Chronoton detonator and are set to find it. But Robin's anger leads to a rift with his teammates. They track Slade's locations, but it turns out to be a decoy, and Slade reveals his true plan to make Robin his apprentice. He has secretly implanted nanoscopic probes in the other Titans' bloodstreams and threatens to kill them if Robin disobeys. In the end, Robin agrees to become Slade's apprentice in order to save his friends. Now Slade is using Robin as a pawn, and the Titans decide to save him from Slade's control. However, the plan heavily backfires when he activates the probes. In a clever move, Robin injects himself with the probes too, and Slade is forced to give up because he doesn't want to kill Robin. In the end, they manage to defeat Slade and remove the probes, reaffirming their bond as a team. Season 1 then concludes with Slade making his escape, but don't worry, we will see him again. One day, Terra, a powerful and mysterious girl, shows up in Jump City and impresses the Teen Titans with her gravitational abilities, especially Beast Boy who falls in love with her. When Slade appears and tries to recruit her as his apprentice, Terra's lack of control causes chaos. Eventually, she runs away, leaving the Titans to wonder about her true nature and destiny. Slade watches from the shadows, determined to have Terra on his side. Sometime later, Terra returns to the Teen Titans and proves that she's improved her kinetic powers. The Titans face a dangerous threat when Slade creates giant mechanical 
mechanical worm-like drills to sink Titan's tower underground. They're then saved by Terra's power and welcome her to the team. However, it appears that she's been hiding something from the group. Afterward, Beast Boy asks Terra out on a date, and they go to an abandoned theme park where they bond and form a romantic connection. However, it's revealed that Terra is secretly working with Slade, who attacks them during the date. The whole group, especially Beast Boy, is left heartbroken and devastated. Terra has now become Slade's new apprentice and is determined to destroy the Teen Titans. They realize that Terra's suit is what's allowing Slade to control her actions and attacks through a neural interface. Despite this, Beast Boy refuses to give up on Terra, believing that she's not truly evil. The Titans decide to give her one more chance, but she helps Slade take over the entire city. Eventually, Terra realizes the truth about Slade and tries to break free from his control. She fights against Slade, throws him into an active lava pit, and uses all of her power to save the city from a volcanic eruption. In the end, she does turn into stone, and the Titans honor her as a true friend. End, vowing to bring her back someday. In an effort to uncover the reason behind the rising criminal activities of the Hive Academy students, the Teen Titans send Cyborg on an undercover mission. Disguised as Stone, he gains the trust of the delinquent trio and catches the attention of the Academy's new headmaster, Brother Blood. Cyborg discovers Blood's plan to build the Ion Amplifier, a powerful device funded through robberies. However, Blood exposes Cyborg's true identity and manipulates him with the promises of making him fully human again. During a confrontation with the Titans, Cyborg reveals his true allegiance, fights against Blood, and brings down the Hive Academy. One day, Slade's mask begins glowing ominously, leaving the Titans to wonder about the potential return of their most dangerous foe. Sometime later, Raven accidentally released the mighty dragon Malkior, thinking that he's the wizard who actually sealed him in the book. After putting the Titan's life at stake, she engages in a one-on-one -on -one battle and manages to banish him back into the book. In the end, she embraces Beast Boy as a true friend who always makes her feel less lonely. One night, Aqualad knocks on the door and reveals that Blood has created a sonic resonator from Cyborg's blueprints and plans to flood the city using them. They head out on a mission and Cyborg comes across Bumblebee, who is also working as a spy. Blood manages to get away, but Cyborg receives his blueprints back from Bumblebee and contemplates her invitation to join them before deciding to stay with the Titans. In Steel City, Robin sends Cyborg to help build Team Titan's East Tower, which consists of Bumblebee, Aqualad, Speedy, and the twins, Masimenos. With the guidance of Cyborg, they face threats from Brother Blood. They then defeat Steamroller, and Cyborg decides to stay and lead Titan's East, much to Robin's dismay. However, Titan's East is revealed to be under Brother Blood's mind control, who had planned all the attacks to break Titans from within. Soon after, Cyborg becomes the target of the brainwashed Titans East. The Teen Titans rush to his rescue and manage to save him, save him from becoming one of the brainwashed soldiers. With Brother Blood defeated, the Titans East is freed from his control and Cyborg rejoins the Teen Titans. Season 3 then ends as Bumblebee takes role of Titans East's new leader. Slade is back with new powers and plans to fulfill Raven's destiny by making her destroy the world. Turns out he's been revived by Trigon, who offers offers him his flesh and blood back if he agrees to help him. Anyways, he burns a mark on Raven's arm and tells her that the portal must be opened. Slade also claims that she will destroy the world, and Raven is horrified by a vision of a ruined world. Later, in a dark cave, Slade speaks to an evil force, confirming that the first task is complete and the prophecy will be fulfilled, leading to the end of the world of mortals. The Titans discover that Slade's symbol is the mark of Scath and that it's connected to Raven's dark destiny. Raven reveals that she's the daughter of Trigon and the key to bringing him to Earth. Despite the dark prophecy, her teammates vow to prevent the end of the world. Slade informs Trigon of the prophecy and the Titans prepare for a final battle to save the world from impending doom. Soon after, the Titans construct a quarantine room to protect her when the day arrives. However, Trigon manipulates her mind and makes her go with Slade to summon him. Slade now confronts 
once Trigon for his promised reward as he delivered Raven, but Trigon betrays him. Because why not? The Titans catch up to Raven, trying to convince her to change her fate, but it's to no avail. She sacrifices herself to open the portal, and Trigon emerges as the episode ends. Trigon has unleashed his destructive powers on Earth, turning everything to ruin and petrifying its inhabitants. The surviving Titans, with some of Raven's leftover powers, vow to keep fighting in her honor. But let's be real, they're no match for Trigon. Slade appears and offers to help them find a way to save Raven. Robin agrees to go, while the rest of the Titans stay to fight Trigon. As they journey underground, Robin encounters a young girl who looks like Raven, but is just nine years old. Young Raven has no memory of her friends, but our hero is determined to make her remember things. On the other hand, Slade finds a large metal door which restores his human body when he blows it open. Above ground, Robin and a young Raven reunite with the rest. When Trigon knocks out the whole group, Raven's eyes begin to glow white and she returns to her real age with a white glowing robe. Denying her ties with her evil father, she claims the Titans and the Monks of Azeroth are her real family and launches one giant wave attack which not only wipes Trigon, but also reverts the entire world back to normal. She embraces Robin for never giving up on her, and Season 4 concludes with the Titans celebrating their victory in their Teen Tower. After reversing the apocalypse, the Titans face a daunting challenge when Beast Boy's former team, the Doom Patrol, is captured by the Brotherhood of Evil. The Titans spring into action and they unite their strength to confront the Brotherhood and put an end to their wicked plans. Soon after, the Brotherhood starts kidnapping young heroes, and the Titans have no choice but to rally up and put an end to their schemes. Madame Rouge, who masquerades as Hotspot, ultimately succeeds in obtaining a communicator from Robin, and the Brotherhood has now infiltrated into the Titans' communications. The Titans split up to equip the young heroes worldwide with Titans communicators, unaware that the villain Brain is using it to launch a coordinated attack against them. Each Titan faces their own fierce battle with the Brotherhood's allies, leaving them spread thin and vulnerable. Soon, Robin deduces Brain's plan and uses his communicator to short-circuit the rest, but he ends up captured along with several other Titans. Beast Boy and a group of honorary Titans rally together and form an effective team to take on the Brotherhood of Evil. They manage to capture Cinderblock and obtain valuable information about the Brotherhood's base. With unexpected reinforcements arriving, the Titans overpower the villains and and free their captured teammates. The villains attempt to escape, but are apprehended by Beast Boy and Robin. They're cryogenically frozen, and the Titans emerge victorious. Afterward, the Teen Titans return home, and Beast Boy believes that he saw Terra. He meets a girl who looks like Terra, but has no memory of her past or powers, so confronts Terra's statue and realizes that she's been revived. He tries to jog her memory, but all his efforts prove futile. Eventually, he lets go of the past, accepting that the girl he met is no longer the Terra he loved. It's changed, Beast Boy. The girl you want me to be is just a memory. The series then ends with Beast Boy running off to help his friends. Oh, and uh, do you guys remember the villain Brushogan? So Daizo had tied him to some kind of printing press that would use his powers against his will. So Daizo had tied him to some kind of printing press that would use his powers against his will. He would create villains and then stage their apprehension to gain applause from the public, meaning all this time, Brushogan was innocent. Brushogan meets his demise after being released from the press machine by Robin. As for Daizo, his crimes are exposed and he's put behind bars. And finally, after five epic seasons, Robin and Starfire express their feelings for each other and kiss, ending the series in the most perfect of fashions. Alright folks, this was the entire timeline of Teen Titans so far. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon for more similar content.